Hey everybody, before we get started actually nailing boards and windows together, we first need to think about how this thing is even going to be designed. Now I think that there's a very obvious reason for why it's difficult to find any sort of step-by-step -step instructions on building a reclaimed window greenhouse. And that's because your old or antique windows are going to be different dimensions from the windows that I have. So it's very difficult for someone to give you step-by-step -step instructions on how best to make it work for you. There are also other variables such as sun angle and things to consider that are going to be very individual for your location. So I think the best thing I can do is show you the thought process I went through and hopefully you can glean some information from that and be able to do the research and find out what the actual numbers are going to be for yourself before you move forward. So don't just copy and paste. Think about uh, what I'm showing you and how you can best put that to use for yourself. Well, the first thing I think that you need to do is actually take some inventory of what it is you are working with. You can see I have my inventory here. You can see I have used names for these items that mean something to me. They're certainly not the trade names that any carpenter or construction worker is going to recognize, but I know what they mean to me. And so I put down a quantity and I put down the dimensions of this. And these dimensions allow me to then think about which ones I want to have located where. And so you can see, for example, I know that for the front wall of my greenhouse, I'm going to use these different pieces of glass. And I have a drawing that shows how those are laid out. And then over here, I write down the remainder. So you can see I had one of these sliding doors and I used one, so I have none left. Uh, but for example, down here, I had three of these windows and I used two of them and that gives me one left. Then I have another wall, which you'll see in the design later. And you can see I'm adding those in and then I have the sides and how many I'm using there. And you can generally see how I'm trying to keep track of what glass I have available to me and where I used it. But how do you actually figure out what this design is going to look like? For that, I want to take you over first to a website that I highly recommend called suncalc.org. Now this is a fun little website uh, that gives you, among other things, the angle of the sun at whatever time of day you prefer. So for example, uh, here we are, and you can zoom this in to whatever uh, distance that you want. Uh, but this funny shaped piece of property here is mine and that is right where the greenhouse is going to be. You can uh, load on the satellite imagery if that helps you locate where you're going to go. And you can set the date and time. So what I'm specifically looking for in this example is the highest altitude the sun will be at, the highest angle of the sun on the shortest day of the year, the winter solstice. So I'm going to change my date here to December 21st, which is the winter solstice. Now we're on the winter solstice and I can up here grab the sun and move it. Now pay close attention because only on the solstice is the sun actually uh, at its highest point at noon. But if you look over here at the altitude, we can see that we're at 34 degrees. So the highest the sun will be in the sky is 34 degrees off the ground that day. So 34 degrees. And then you can change this. Let's say you wanted to know uh, for the month previous. So if we go back to November and hit there, and again we can drag the sun up top until it points directly down, and we can see that in November the highest it gets is 37 and a half degrees. Now, if you don't pay much attention to the sun, then it might surprise you how much this changes. But let's go back just a couple more months to August and see just how dramatically this changes. So now if we point this directly south, we now see the sun is at 69 and a half degrees. So this is what we're looking for, are these angles. And again, the one that I feel is most important to us today is the the winter 
uh, solstice at its highest altitude, which is going to be 34 degrees. Here are the tools that I'll be using for this. I have a ruler, my protractor, graph paper, a pen, and of course some fine tip markers. I'm going to start by marking the place where the ground meets the house. So this is the, the corner of the greenhouse where the greenhouse, the ground, and the house all meet. I know that my greenhouse has to be 10 foot tall so I can clear a window that is on the house. So I'm going to mark 10 feet up the wall and I know it's going to be 8 foot wide so I'm going to mark 8 feet away from the house. But the question is how do I figure out what goes on in this area? How do I figure out what the profile of the greenhouse is actually going to look like? Well, based on my available glass, I know that my wall can either be 6 foot tall or 8 feet tall. So let's first look at what would happen if this were a 6 foot tall window. I measure 6 feet up and then connect the line from the house to the top of my front wall. Now, in this example, we're assuming that the roof is going to be a solid roof. Make sure your roof extends just a few inches over the front of the greenhouse like it would in real life. So there's my roof and here is my glass. Now we need to figure out where would the sun actually go? Where is the direct sunlight into this area? So make sure that your protractor is lined up properly on the graph paper and for this example we're going to assume the sunlight is coming in at 25 degrees so we figured out a 25 degree angle and now we're connecting a dot from the measurement we took and the very edge of the roof so there's the very edge of the roof that's what's going to stop the sunlight so we're going to connect our line that we made uh, measurement from the protractor and that line and draw it all the way to the back of the greenhouse against the side of the house. So here's our sun at a 25 degree angle and it is reaching two feet up the back wall. Now let's take another measurement. Let's assume maybe it's a month later and the sun has gone up a little bit in January and now it's at 30 degrees. So we take a 30 degree angle and again connect the dots and draw a line and we can see that in this example with a six foot wall and a solid roof a 30 degree sun in January is going to be a foot off the back wall. Well let's take another example and see what it would be if it were an eight foot tall roof. So again we, were, we got the front now going to eight feet all the other dimensions are the same. We're going to draw on our solid roof again. and Remember to leave that lip. But the glass, the front of this greenhouse, is now 8 feet tall. And again, that's based off of glass that I know I have. I can make either a 6 foot tall glass front or I can make an 8 foot tall glass front. So if it were 8 foot tall, what difference is it going to be? Now if you know the different angles that you're going to be using. Uh, you can mark them all at once. So we're going to mark 25 degrees and we're going to mark 30 degrees and we're going to draw those lines. And remember we're, we're connecting the, the angle we measured on the protractor with the tip of the roof. Whatever it is that's going to stop the sun from getting in. And we see that now we can get four feet up the wall. So we've actually doubled uh, the height up the back wall by getting two more feet on the front and we've only lost one foot still uh, going up another uh, five degrees. So that's a, an eight foot glass wall gives us that. So that's the difference that we're seeing between a six foot wall and an eight foot wall. And these are the kind of things I'm thinking about trying to make a design choice. But let's say we want to try to figure out what if we want maximum sun exposure? Uh, so we have a sun coming in at 25 degrees. We know we have our sun at 25 degrees uh, in our example here uh, coming in. And we want to have a wall that is exactly 
90 degrees to that. It's exactly perpendicular or complementary angle to the sun. Well, that means we need a wall that is 65 degrees. So we can use our protractor and uh, putting uh, the center of the protractor where the wall meets the ground. We're, we're just going to count backwards. Uh, for easy math's sake, 10, 20, and 5 degrees and that's getting us our 65 degree angle so to speak and we'll draw uh, a line between those points but how long of a line well it depends how long we want the wall to be so since we have this graph paper that we're using we can simply lay our ruler down on the graph paper and uh, we're doing this as one line per foot so if we are going to assume a six foot tall wall we can just mark where that would be on our ruler and then put our ruler between those two dots the ground where the glass would meet the ground and our 65 degree angle and then we can mark where our six foot mark is on our ruler and draw a line between those points so now we have a six foot wall at a 65 degree angle which is a 90 degree complementary angle to the 25 degree angle of the Sun stay with me here it's complicated but it's easy as soon as you understand it but look at what that ends up giving us for a roof we end up with this funny angle and a funny span and I don't know about you but what I think about is how hard this might be to construct so I want to come up with something that lets me have the straight walls in the first design but the light exposure of the second design and what I've come up with is this this is a, a split design so I have six foot of elevation in the very front wall then it goes back four feet elevates up and there's another area right here where there's some windows and then goes back to the wall so if you look at all these different lines what you're looking at are the uh, sun exposures through the different panes of glass the two different areas the very front wall and the windows in the upper section at the various parts of the year uh, starting at the very top or right most it goes September October November and December and those angles are almost exactly the same if you then work your way back up January February and March so for all winter I have light in my greenhouse well I'm sorry if that was as clear as mud I didn't think I'd be very good at explaining it and I am confident that there is somebody out there who knows a more clear and concise way of figuring this type of a thing out but those are the thought process I went through to figure out what I'm going to do so now we can move forward and start thinking about actually putting the boards together because we have a design to work with again my design is based on two primary things I wanted to keep my walls where my glass is going to be at 90 degrees I did not want to have to figure out how I was going to put heavy panes of glass in a wall that was at an angle but I still wanted to have maximum light exposure so I get to have glass on the front wall and then a little bit further back a small section of glass I have some of my glass panes that are about 18 inches wide I can lay them down on their side and make a long skinny section of glass that will be a second point of entry for the light and get direct light all the way to the back wall or to the wall of the house so that is the design I am going to go with if you're ready to see how some of this actually goes together, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and follow this playlist so that you don't miss the next video when it comes out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.